Hi, my loves. Welcome back to the Stars Cartel channel. If you don't know, I'm Star. Baby. See, it's kind of like, I, I just feel it. I just feel it in my spirit. For somebody, I drink some fishes. Okay, and for those of you that ever watched um, Soul Food, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, I drink some fishes, baby. Okay, so anywho, let me talk to y'all about this dream. In this dream, I was staying at a woman's house while I was in wait for God to move. So I'm in this room, and I am uh, in the room where I am at. There is a baby, a baby girl that is being cared for by two older men. I go into like this uh, closet, kind of like a storage closet, and I start fishing around for a certain kind of spice, the seasoning that I wanted. I am in my mind thinking I need some brown sugar. And I end up finding something else. It's like it kind of looked like brown sugar, but it wasn't brown sugar. And when I looked at it, it said something about eggs and like how to, like it's something about eggs and go ahead and say egg fertilizer. Like it's something about eggs. And when I look at it, it's kind of like, okay, let me give y'all a description. It's kind of like, kind of like how this cup is. Like, it's like, it was filled up with all of the stuff. The cunts, it looked like brown sugar and it was overflowing. Like it was coming out of there. It was all the way up at the top and it was filling all over the shelf. And I was like, how in the world? It looked like, like it burst out. Like it was going up into a pile to the top and then it was flowing all over the shelf. I was like, dang, this is everywhere. This needs to be cleaned up. And while I'm looking at this, I began to hear the baby crying. And when I turn around, I notice that they have sat her inside of her little crib and they sleep. And so I go to pick her up. But when I go up to her, I get scared. And I'm thinking to myself, what if she don't like me? Uh, what if they get mad at me for picking up the baby? That's where the dream ends. So at the end of this dream, I begin to hear a choir singing. Won't you tell... Won't you let me tell what God has did for me? Won't you let me tell what God has did for me? I can't even recall the melody that they were singing this in, but they kept saying, won't you let me tell what God has did for me? Won't you let me tell what God has did for me? The scripture comes from Testaments of the Twelve Patriarchs, the Testament of Naphtali, the eighth son of Jacob and Belah, Bilhah, this man had all the wives. And this is one and two. When his sons were gathered together in the seventh month on the first day of the month until while still in good health, he made them a feast of food and wine. So here's the message. For somebody, God said, while you are still in good health, while you are still of good age, while you are still up and moving around, while you still got it going on, while you still are in uh, your good years, you're going to have a baby. I don't know who this is for. God said he is going to bless you. He, there is a baby with your name on it. God said with your name on it. There is a baby with your name on it. It's not a situation where you're not going to get the baby. And for some of y'all, you are keeping, like, in your mind, you are believing that you have to leave a certain place first, and you have to have this in order, and you have to have that in order, and maybe you should do this first, and you need to work out that first. God said you're going to have this. It's going to come as a surprise to you. You're not going to be expecting it. And obviously, I'm going to also add, it shouldn't be a surprise, but it's going to come as a surprise. You know what I'm saying? Because if you, 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 you anyways, but uh, for whoever this is for, go ahead and say it's gonna come as a surprise to you. You're not gonna be expecting to be pregnant, you're not gonna be thinking that you're pregnant. And I'm being reminded, like, when I was pregnant, I wasn't expecting that I was gonna be pregnant, I didn't know I was pregnant, and I went for about two months not knowing I was pregnant, and then bam.
And I just feel like for whoever this is for, God says it's going to be like, it's going to be a bam. And um, I also feel like you're going to have that moment as well. You're going to have a moment of being nervous. You're going to have a moment of not knowing what you're going to do. You're going to have a moment of being scared. You may have a moment of panic. But for whoever this is for, God said that he has fertilized your egg. Your eggs have been fertilized. It's to such an extent that it's overflowing. And you are, when you meet your person, when you meet your person, you, is like, it's happening, okay? It's happening. It's happening. And the thing is, for sometimes, see, sometimes when we have things going on where people are trying to interfere with what God has for us, they will kind of, like, okay, so what I'm seeing is somebody that has been putting, like, spells on you to withhold you from moving forward. And it's kind of like to hold you back. And they know that, like, they may have uh, did a layout on your journey. And you can do this with, like, the tarot. You can do a layout on somebody's journey. And they're seeing that certain things are supposed to happen before other things happen. And because they see that, they'll attack you getting married. They'll attack you getting a house. They'll attack you doing this, that, and the third so that you won't be able to go on to the next step. And you, it's like what you're doing is trying to go step by step by step. God said it's not going to be that way. He's going to scatter some things up. He didn't, he can, he can, he gonna shuffle the cards around because this person is trying to interfere with what you like. They want it to be at such an extent that it's going to be too late for you. God says it's not going to be too late for you. He will give you a baby right now. If he feel like it, he'll give you a baby when he feel like it. It's not going to be a situation where this person is going to be able to stop him from doing what he's doing. They want to try to interfere with what God is doing in your life. And, you know, for somebody, you don't want to meet your spouse until you are away from certain people or you're not around certain people because they keep on messing up your relationships. God said when it's the person that is intended to be with you, can't nobody mess that up. It'll be a type of situation where a the person, they go through the same thing you do. Like, if you have to deal with people lying and coming up with rumors and making up rumors about you and all that, God said he will send you somebody that go through the same thing. People always lying on them, making up rumors about them, talking about they doing this, they doing that, they did this, they did that, and none of it's true. God said he will put, he will put it, in, like, he going to do some things to where this person will understand you. It's not going to be a situation where this is going to be somebody they don't have no understanding of what you got going on. They understand what you're going through. They may be going through the same thing. They may be. Even if it's a matter of, you know, I know how a lot of people have to deal with their families being involved with backhanded stuff and, you know, trafficking and cults and all kind of crazy stuff like that. God said he will send you somebody that's going through the same thing. He will send you somebody, your ex is crazy and act like they don't have no screws and they always lying on you. God said his ex, okay, or her ex is also crazy and don't have no understanding of letting go and always lying on them as well. God said he will send you somebody to where y'all are literally mirroring each other. Y'all are equally yoked. But God said, when it come down to it, this person right here, uh, for somebody... Your ex, like for somebody, this person, um, someone you experience, there is someone in your family that keeps sleeping with the people that you get with. Like, and this is somebody you wouldn't even imagine them being attracted to. Like, this would be like your mom or an aunt or a cousin or, and it's somebody that the age gap is so crazy and so wild that it don't even make sense that these people are being like, yeah, come on, let's go. It's kind of like, what's going on? And, you know, for some of y'all, it's a situation, it's a matter of this person forcing themselves upon these people. And for some of y'all, it's a matter of, you know what I'm saying, this person using witchcraft or whatever they got going on. You know what I'm saying? But when it really comes down to it, there are some people that are really disgusting and they will lay down with anything and anybody. And God is saying, like, the person that is for you is not going to be down for that. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm trying to think about, what I'm thinking about is how some people, like, in, uh... Friday after next, when uh, Damon was messing with Kat, and Kat was like, I am a boy, Damon. 
He was not playing with him. He was not playing with him. And he was not playing with him some more. You know what I'm saying? Some people, they will fight. Okay? They will fight. They will snatch anything. And I'm just looking like, you know what I'm saying? Like, around my room and how I like that. So, baby, they, they, they will grab anything to get that person up off of them. And whoever this person is, they better be careful because they run across the wrong person. Baby, they going to be out of them. And what, like, what a shame and what a pity will it be when the news say, that somebody at whatever age they are got taken up out of here because they was trying to take the goodies from somebody that didn't want to give it to them. That's shameful. That's pity. That's nasty. And you know what I'm saying? That's that's like that's that's one crazy way to go up out of here. That that's I guess going out with a bang, but you know what I'm saying? And that's embarrassing. I can't say that's embarrassing right there. That's embarrassment. And it's not even embarrassing just for them. It would be like, you know what I'm saying? Because if this was me and my, if I was in this position with somebody such as, you know what I'm saying? Like that's older than me, kept on sleeping with my persons. And I finally met my person person. And this person took them up out of here. That would be so embarrassing. Like they tried to do what? And you did what? I wouldn't even know how to feel. But I just feel like for whoever this is for, God is saying, like, if this person don't chill and find something else to do, and, like, you know, whatever they trying to do is not working. You know what I'm saying? Because I know, like, for some of y'all, it's a situation where this person is feeling like if they lay down with somebody after you lay down with them, they're going to be able to take your essence, take your blessings, and take what God has. God is not confused about who you are. If that was the case, then when you lay down with somebody that 9 out of 10 is not a virgin, you can take away whatever blessings the person that they laid with before them had. You can't do that. Like some people, I, I, did, I know that there are some people that are into new age and witchcraft and they say that you just go by how you feel and you can make up your own spells and you can do whatever you want. Baby, everything got to go past God this first. And God is not going to be confused about if he's supposed to be giving the newborn baby to somebody that is post-menopause or somebody that is in their age, their bearing years. It doesn't like that. that where's the logic? Where's the common sense that flew out the window? Logic that ran away. Like, you cannot do that. I'm so sick and tired of people being just... And then I know that some people, it gives them empowerment. It makes them feel like they're young again. Newsflash, you sleeping around with somebody that's younger than you does not mean that you're younger. Period. You, it, it don't mean that you got it going on. It don't mean that now all of a sudden you are a hot shot. And it don't mean that you are in uh, equal... To the person whose person it is. It don't. It don't. It don't. It don't. I'm going to be real. It's men all the time that cheat on their wives with the women of the night. That wig is on backwards. So if they would cheat. If they would sleep with that. they they'll, If a tree is curvy enough with a hole in it they go you know what i'm saying so if that like this is not something to be proud of this is not something to hold your head high about this is not something to be like yes i did it and look at me and i got it going on no you don't i'm just being real like it is not a situation where men is gonna men. you know what i'm saying and i don't even understand the logic in this but this is somebody it makes them feel good uh, to be able to say to themselves, I slept with her man, and then I slept, I slept with her other man, and then I slept with her other man. It's not looking good. It's not cute. It's not like it's nothing uh awesome about that. You know what I'm saying? If you just want to have fun and you want to sleep around with all the people and what, do your business. But to actually put yourself in a position where you are constantly coming in between and causing calamities for one other person, that is not a situation where you are just getting away with that. I just feel like this is somebody, they going through all kind of stuff, all kind of things is just going on in their life, all kind of calamities going on, happening to them and those that they care about because they refuse to realize that God don't like what they're doing. And until they stop, they're going to keep on enduring these calamities. They're going to keep on enduring all this pain, all this hardship, all this trauma that they causing on other people. Because, I don't know, I just feel like that would be a traumatic experience for my persons. Um, and I experienced that. 
I was dating this guy and his stepfather came on to me and it creeped me out. I was like, why in the world would you even like, what's wrong with you? You know what I'm saying? And it's not like I was dressed like I was trying to, you know, I had on baggy sweatpants and a, a sweater. I'm like, sir, you act like you don't have, what's wrong with you? You act like you don't have no sense. Why in the world are you even looking at me like that? And you married and you got somebody. Why are you so concerned about what's going on over here? This ain't for you. <laughs> but some people are crazy. They think they're supposed to have everything. But wh whatever. Okay, I'm getting out of, uh, you know, subject. But God said, for whoever this is for, he has shuffled the cards. And it's no longer going to go the way that it was supposed to go. Because somebody is trying to interfere with you receiving certain things and certain things happening for you. And therefore, God has decided to move it, push it up somewhere else. So, for whoever this is for, when you meet your person, you're going to be pregnant. Ain't nobody going to be able to do nothing about it. It's not like this is going to be, and I, I, and that's for somebody too, because there's someone that keeps trying to cause you to lose pregnancies. God said you're going to be pregnant, and nobody is going to be able to do anything about it. When God said you're going to have a baby, you're going to have that baby. It don't matter what you do. It don't matter what anybody else does. It doesn't matter what they try to do. I remember when I was pregnant with my son, I like would get so sick. I didn't know I was pregnant, like I said, for two months. When I would try to smoke a cigarette, I would get so sick that I couldn't even finish the whole thing. When I would try to drink, I would throw it back up instantly. And it was to an extent where I was like, something ain't right. And it got to an extent where I ain't even want to smoke no more. I want to drink no more. I want, like, I couldn't. God said he has, he, he, he has things to get around whatever little problems you may have going on. God said you're going to have that baby. When it's time, you're going to have that baby. And you can be hesitant all you want to, nervous all you want to, confused if the baby is going to like you. I don't know if this is for somebody, like, maybe you've had a child or you have a child and your child is, um, you, you feel like your child doesn't like you. Maybe you feel like your child doesn't love you. God said that this baby is going to love you. This baby is going to be like, this is, this baby is going to be like, I'm hearing the apple of your eye, like the apple of my eye. This is your baby. This is going to be, and it's going to be yours. Anywho, that's the man. This is going to be a miracle for somebody because of the choir at the end of the dream. God says it's going to be a miracle. It is going to be a miracle, but this this is somebody you thought you wouldn't have no more kids. You kind of gave up on having kids. You have convinced yourself that you can't have kids. You have convinced yourself that God has forgotten about you. God said he did not forget about you. And even though it looked like it's, gonna, it's, going, it's not going too well, God said you're going to have a baby, and you're going to have that baby. And when God send you your person, and when y'all come together, you're going to be pregnant. And there is nothing that is going to be able to get rid of this pregnancy. I'm being reminded of this um, woman that I met that told me she tried all different forms of birth control and all of them failed. God said, ain't nothing going to get rid of this baby. Ain't no pill going to be able to get rid of this baby. Ain't no shot going to be able to get rid of this baby. There's no drink that's going to get rid of this baby. There's no no liquid uh, poison or nothing like that that's going to get rid of this baby. God said in here, no fumes will be able to get rid of this baby. God said you're going to have this baby. And anybody that tries to interfere, they are going to receive the wrath of God. And in reality, for somebody, every time that someone has interfered, they have received the wrath of God, regardless if they want to accept it or not. Their life will be much more pleasant if they will leave you alone. And it's, it's interesting because some people don't realize that. They think that they just being a menace and they messing up stuff in your life. And all the while, their life is just falling apart. And for some of them, they feel like they don't care about their life getting messed up. And God will start messing with people that they do care about. They, life, they want their life to go good. He'll start messing up their life. God said he's not playing about you. They need to leave you alone. 
your life is going to go the way God said it's going to go. And nobody is going to be able to interfere with that. And that's the message. God said, while you in good health, while you are still in your barren years, while you are still able to carry, okay? God said, you are going to carry a baby. You are going to have a baby and the baby is going to be yours. That baby is specifically for you. The Like the baby, even I'm thinking about how in the dream, this baby was being cared for in this room by these men. And it's kind of like, like when she started crying, I turned around and noticed they were asleep. I was like, is this baby for me? You know what I'm saying? It's that kind of situation, like specifically for you. This baby is for you. This is your baby. That's the message. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe.